Hi there, I'm Jake, and these bees don't particularly care for me. Welcome to Project Science. Bees, how do they get here? What do they want? Actually, the question everyone's really asking is, what's happening to them all? To get at this question, we need to learn a little bit more about the bees themselves, and to that end, I think you'll be surprised. Here are some of the bees of North America. There's probably a few more than you recognize. You've got your honeybee, your bumblebee, and your carpenter bee. But you've also got all these weirdos, and that's barely scratching the surface. Now those three are pretty much the only ones anyone's familiar with. And get this, honeybees, the usual stars of the show, they're not even native to North America. They're domesticated, introduced European species. Let me tell you a little about the others. Current records show over 200 unique bee species in New Hampshire. There are around 4,000 species in North America and around 20,000 worldwide, 20,000 different kinds of bees, and all of them very unique in their own ways. Native Bee Fat Facts. First things first, black and yellow is not the rule. It's what always comes to mind when you think bees, but there are some funky and far out colors out there. And the overwhelming majority are a little more interesting than just Bruins colors. Second, hornets and wasps, not bees. Pollinators, but not bees. Related, but not bees. Kind of like ants. Related, but not bees. Third, and maybe most important, colonies. If I were to do one of those word association things with you right now, I can virtually guarantee that if I were to say bee, many of you would say queen. The idea of a big old colony full of sterile workers tending to a reproductive queen is hard to shake because it's what we're taught. It's the textbook example of a type of social organization known as eusocial, which I'll expand on in a future episode. The kicker? Most bees are not eusocial. They're actually solitary, or pretty close. Instead of a huge hive with tens of thousands of workers and a queen, like with honeybees, there's just a small nest with a mom and her handful of offspring. And now you know. So why do we care about any of this? What makes bees so important to us? I mean, how big of an industry is honey? Again, there's more to this than meets the eye. First of all, honeybees are the only bees that actually produce honey. And second of all, they aren't the most critical species involved here. The real answer is out here. Flowering plants need to be pollinated in order to reproduce, which means that the vast majority of our crops have to be pollinated in order for the parts we eat to actually grow. And while many plants can pollinate via wind, many more need help from pollinators, and bees are the best at what they do. Put simply, no bees, no food. And it's not as easy as, say, encouraging more people to keep beehives. The reason I mentioned before that honeybees aren't the most critical for farms is the fact that the local species are doing most of the heavy lifting. Honeybees are super generalists, which means that they can basically feed on any flower they want to. If you have a farm and decide to keep bees, yes, those honeybees will pollinate your crops, but not very efficiently, and they'll often bully a lot of the native species away. Meanwhile, most of those native species are specialists, having co-evolved with their host plant for a kind of one-to-one -one benefit situation. So if one of the bee species disappears, you can expect a plant species to follow. With these facts in mind, let's revisit our original question. What's happening to all the bees? We hear all the time about how they're disappearing. Terms like colony collapse and neonicotinoids get thrown around. But this isn't the whole problem. Yes, colony collapse is bad, and it's hurting beekeepers. But honeybees are not in danger of extinction, and not even really very effective pollinators. It's the myriad native species nobody even notices that are seriously on the decline. Pesticides like neonicotinoids are definitely causing problems for a number of insect species and hurting populations left and right. But land use, climate change, pathogens, and invasive species are all responsible for disappearances too. Habitat destruction may even be a bigger problem than spraying chemicals. But no matter how you cut it, it's our fault. Oops. So how can we help? Research and action. Research can tell us just which species are on the decline in specific regions and which factors are responsible for these die-offs. To do this research, we catch bees. Catching bees with nets and pan traps allows us to look at who's around and measure species diversity over time to see what changes. And while it may seem terrible and counterintuitive to kill bees in order to save them, rest assured that we only catch the bare minimum number of individuals necessary to get an accurate cross-section of the community composition. Nothing more. We're not monsters, geez. This doesn't contribute to their decline, but does contribute to our knowledge of how to help them. 
As for the action part of the deal, that's where you come in. Bee friendly farming is an awesome practice. Plant a bunch of different wildflower species that bloom at different times throughout the season and you'll encourage bees to stick around. Even if you're not a farmer, you can do this in your backyard or garden too. Look into local wildflower species for your area and plant some seeds. Something else that you can do in your backyard is literally build more habitat. This is a bee hotel. Using only found materials like sticks and blocks with drilled holes, you can make a whole bunch of nesting space for a whole bunch of species. Another great and very easy option is to make what are called soft edges. Whether your yard is bordered by woods or by fence, if you just leave a single strip along the border about a mowing deck width from the edge and mow that only once at the beginning of the season, this allows all kinds of cool stuff to grow that the bees will love. There are even companies that have prepared mixed packets of wildflower seeds that are pollinator friendly and you can just throw those in the ground and go. Links for those are in the doobly-doo. So if you don't want your native species to go extinct before you even get a chance to freaking see one of them, lend a hand. All these are important. There are way more kinds than you may have realized, but you can easily help each and every one of them. Thanks for watching.